Welcome to week four. This week we will go through chapter 10. You will learn and be able to recognize nail disorders and diseases. Why should you study nail disorders and diseases? You must be able to identify those conditions on a client's nails and determine if they should or should not be treated in the salon. You must acknowledge infectious conditions that may be present so you can take the appropriate steps to protect yourself and your clients from the spread of disease. You need to be able to recognize conditions that may signal mild to serious health problems that warrant the attention of a doctor. To perform professional and responsible service and care, you need to learn about the structure and growth of the nail, as you did in Chapter 9, Nail Structure and Growth. Now you must learn about the disorders and diseases of nails so that you will know when it's safe to work on a client. Nails are an interesting and surprising part of the human body. The nail is a small mirror into an individual's general health. Certain health conditions may first be revealed by a change in the nails, a visible disorder, or poor nail growth. Some conditions are easily treated in the salon. Hang nails, for instance, are bruised nail beds that need camouflage, but some are infectious and cannot be treated by salon professionals. Carefully studying this chapter will vastly improve your knowledge and expertise in caring for nails. Pinpointing common and uncommon nail disorders. A nail disorder is a condition caused by injury, heredity, or previous disease of the nail unit. A cosmetologist should recognize common or normal disorders as well as abnormal nail conditions, understand what to do, and be able to help a client with a nail disorder in one of two ways. You can tell the clients that they may have a disorder and refer them to a physician if required. You can cosmetically improve certain nail plate conditions if the problem is cosmetic and not a medical condition. It is your professional responsibility and a requirement of your license to know which option you should choose. A client whose nail or skin is infected, inflamed, broken, or swollen should not receive services and should be referred to a physician to determine the type of treatment that is required. Now we're going to talk about common nail disorders. First, we have Bowes lines. These are sometimes called furrows or corrugations. These are visible depressions running across the width of the natural nail plate. It's a result from a major injury or illness that has traumatized the body. Next, we have blue fingernails. This is usually caused by a lack of circulating oxygen in the red blood cells, may also represent a high level of an abnormal form of hemoglobin in the circulation. Next, bruised nail beds is a condition in which a blood clot forms under the nail plate, causing a dark purplish spot. This is usually due to small injuries to the nail bed. Discolored nails, nails that turn a variety of colors, caused by surface stains from nail polish, foods, dyes, or smoking, could also be caused by an internal discoloration of the nail plate due to biological, medical, or even pharmaceutical reasons. Eggshell nails are noticeably thin, white nail plates that are more flexible than normal. They're normally weaker and can curve over the free edge, usually caused by improper diet, hereditary factors, internal disease, or medication. Be very careful when manicuring these nails because they are fragile and can break easily. Hang nails, a condition in which the living skin around the nail plate splits and tears. Never cut the living skin around the natural nail plate, even if it is dry and rough looking. Coilonychia 
is soft spoon nails with a concave shape that appear scooped out. The depression is usually large enough to hold a drop of liquid. Often spoon nails are a sign of iron deficiency, anemia, or a liver condition known as hemochromatosis, in which your body absorbs too much iron from the food you eat. Spoon nails can also be associated with heart disease and hypothyroidism or other long-term illnesses. Leukonychia spots, also known as white spots, are whitish discoloration of the nails, usually caused by minor injury to the nail matrix. It is a myth that these are caused by a vitamin or mineral deficiency. They appear frequently in the nails, but do not indict disease. As the nail continues to grow, the white spots eventually grow off and disappear. Melaninitia is darkening of the fingernails or toenails. This may be seen as a black band within the nail plate extending from the base to the free edge. In some cases, it may affect the entire nail plate. This is a fairly common occurrence and considered normal in people of color but could be indicative of a disease condition called Caucasus. Onychophagy is bitten nails, is the result of a habit of chewing the nail or the hardened damaged skin around the nail plate. Bitten, damaged skin should not be treated by a cosmetologist. If the skin is broken or infected, no services can be provided until the area is healed. Onychorexis is split or brittle nails with lengthwise ridges. This is caused by an injury to the matrix, excessive use of cuticle solvents, harsh cleaning agents, polish removers, aggressive filing, or hereditary causes. Nail services can be performed only if the nail is not split and exposing the nail bed. Plicature nail is highly curved nail plate often caused by injury to the matrix, but may be inherited. This often leads to ingrown nails. Next, we have ridges. These are vertical lines running down the length of the natural nail plate that are caused by uneven growth of the nails, usually the result of normal aging. When manicuring a client with this condition, carefully buff the nail plate or use ridge filler to minimize the appearance of these ridges. Next, we have splinter hemorrhage. This is caused by physical trauma or injury to the nail bed that damages the capillaries and allow small amounts of blood flow. This blood oxidizes and turns brown or black, giving the appearance of a small splinter underneath the nail plate. These are normal and usually associated with some types of heart impact or other physical trauma to the fingernail or toenail. Onychoxus refers to the thickening of nails may be toenails and the fingernails, and may be present in a number of different ways. Onychogryptosis is also known as ram's horn or claw nails. This is an enlargement of the fingernails or toenails accompanied by increased thickening and curvature. Nail pterium is abnormal condition that occurs when skin is stretched by the nail plate. This is caused by serious injuries such as burns or an adverse skin reaction. Do not push extension of skin back with an instrument as it may cause injury and worsen the condition. Pincer nail is also known as trumpet nail. The nail plates 
with deep or sharp curvature at the free edge have this shape because of the matrix. The greater the curvature of the matrix, the greater the curvature of the free edge. Increased curvature can range from mild to severe pinching of the soft tissue at the free edge. In some cases, the free edge pinches the sidewalls into a deep curve. Remember, any nail disease that shows signs of infection or inflammation, which is redness, pain, swelling, or pus, should not be diagnosed or treated in the salon. A medical examination is required for all nail diseases, and treatment will be determined by the physician. Arachia is inflammation of the nail matrix, followed by shedding of the nail. Anya chumacosis is a fungal infection of the natural nail plate. A common form is whitish patches that can be scraped off the surface of the nail. Another common form of this infection shows long, whitish, or pale yellowish streaks within the nail plate. Fungi are parasites which may cause infections on the hands and feet. They are contagious and can be transmitted through contaminated implements. Pyroanechia is a bacterial inflammation of the tissues surrounding the nail plate. Now we're going to talk about infectious nail diseases. First we have Pseudomonas aeruginosa, and this is a common bacteria that can lead to a bacterial infection that appears green, yellow, or black discoloration on the nail bed. Pyogenic granuloma is a severe inflammation of the nail in which a lump of red tissue grows up from the nail bed to the nail plate. Tinea pedis is also known as athlete's foot. It's red. It's a red itchy rash on the skin, on the bottom of the feet, and or between the toes, usually between the fourth and fifth toes. Now we're going to move along to non-infectious nail diseases. Nail psoriasis is a non-infectious condition that affects the surface of the natural nail plate, causing tiny pits or severe roughness on the surface of the nail plate. Onychocryptosis is also known as ingrown nails. This can affect either the fingers or toes. In this condition, the nail grows into the sides of the living tissue around the nail. Onychosis is the lifting of the nail plate from the bed without shedding, usually beginning at the free edge and continuing towards the lanula area. This is usually the result of physical injury, trauma, or allergic reaction of the nail bed and less often related to health disorders. Onychomodesis is the separation and falling off of the nail plate from the nail bed. It can affect fingernails and toenails. In most cases, the cause can be traced to a localized infection, injury to the matrix, or severe systemic illness. Drastic medical procedures such as chemotherapy may also be a cause. A hand, nail, and skin analysis examination will allow a cosmetologist to identify disorders, diseases, and conditions, including signs of infection, which may be identified through pain, redness, swelling, throbbing, and pus. The first step of the hand, nail, and skin analysis is to cleanse. Always begin a hand, skin, and nail analysis by cleaning the hands of both the cosmetologist and the client. Next, you're going to observe. You're going to observe the moisture level of the skin, the temperature of the skin, the condition of the skin, and the tenderness to the touch of the skin. Examine the condition and length of the nails, including the shape 
of the free edge and cuticle and the thickness of the nail plate. After performing the nail examination, share your findings with your client. Identify any form of onychosis, disease, disorder, or condition. Note the apparent cause, is it systemic, environmental, etc. Suggest the proper service or refer a physician. Discuss home maintenance and a future service plan. Let's summarize and review Chapter 10. Well manicured nails have always been recognized as an indication of good grooming. Nails originate in the epidermal layer of the skin and like hair, their condition is dependent upon the individual's overall health. You will want to identify and help correct any unhealthy nail conditions and advise clients on when they need to see a physician. Your creativity in providing quality nail services must be grounded in the thorough knowledge and awareness of the structure and physiology of the nails. Working on unhealthy nails can be dangerous to you and your client. And this concludes Chapter 10 PowerPoint Lecture.